on this Sunday, we're remembering a great occasion in the life of the church. Because as we heard from the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 24, we're taken back to that Easter Sunday, that great celebration that we had celebrated a few Sundays back. For we're remembering the great joy of knowing that we have received our salvation by Christ conquering death and His overcoming sin and death through His glorious resurrection. And for the last few Sundays, we've been hearing about how Jesus visited the apostles during those uh, 40 days that He was still on the earth, before He ascended to heaven, which we'll celebrate in a few more weeks, the ascension of our Lord. But this Sunday, we're taken back to Easter Sunday. We're taken back to that same Sunday where our Lord had conquered death, that same Sunday when the disciples, the apostles, the people who followed Jesus Christ were in a, like they were in a very time of uncertainty. Their master had just been crucified. He had just died like a, a criminal. But now they're hearing the news on the Sunday that he had resurrected. And also, as we know that we celebrated on Easter Sunday, first Mary Magdalene gets to see the Lord, and then the, the apostles run out to go see Jesus, and then he appears to them. <coughs> In the room, in the upper room of St. Mark's house, where they were hiding because they were afraid of the Jews. And the Lord had appeared to them, showing that He had resurrected from the dead. But also on that same Sunday, two of His other disciples, not, not of the twelve, but two other disciples who had followed Jesus, they were walking back to their hometown. They were walking back to Emmaus. And that's how this Bible passage is known as the road to Emmaus. How Jesus appeared to the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Because like I said, during this time, they saw their master being crucified. They couldn't imagine, what does this mean? They thought, they believed that Jesus was the Messiah. But in their own limited understanding, they thought that Jesus was going to be the ruler who would become the new king of Israel. That's what they were expecting. To break them away from the bondage of the slavery of Rome. So that they could be a one, uh, a worshipping nation under God uh, directly. Not under some other foreign nation. Or foreign country. But we know that our Lord did not just come to save Israel. But He came to save all people. And that He explained to these disciples. says so from the very beginning, from Moses to the prophets... He explained all the Old Testament, as we know the Old Testament, all the scriptures up until that point, how He is the fulfillment of all that was called to come, to be. The Messiah, the fulfillment of what it means, mean, meant to be the Messiah. And as I learned in seminary, when our, our, my professor, uh, Father Michael, who is now Bishop Michael, he said, this is probably the greatest Bible study of, on all the earth. That Jesus Christ explained the whole scriptures to them. And they received that great message. But the, the one interesting thing from this passage is that whole time that Jesus was walking with them, they didn't notice Him. We are told by St. Luke that their eyes were restrained. And the tradition tells us, we know who one person's name was, Cleopas. He talk, it says, the one they called Cleopas asked the Lord. It doesn't say the name of the other disciple, but the tradition tells us that that disciple is St. Luke himself. And that's why he can write it in his Gospel. That he was that other disciple walking back to Emmaus. Wondering what does it mean that Jesus had died. But we hear that he's resurrected. But that seems so unimaginable. So that when they see this man coming approaching them. They can't imagine that it's Jesus. And because that he is now glorified and resurrected. To a certain degree also they wouldn't be able to recognize him perfectly. Unless their eyes were opened in a proper way. And that's what happened on this Sunday, on this journey, on this road to Emmaus. Their eyes were being opened to understand and to see the Lord. And that's the challenge that we have living this day, 2013. Now we've already celebrated the Easter or the Pesach, um, the, the Resurrection Sunday for 2013, and we see Jesus in so many different places. We, we, we believe in Jesus in so many things, that He's done so many things for us. 
you know, being with our families or supporting our churches or seeing them, hearing about the miracles that He's done to people to this day. And so we put our belief in Him. But many times, you know, I feel like even myself that would we be able to really recognize Christ if He was really standing in front of us and talking to us? Are we able to recognize the Lord speaking to us directly when we're needing Him? Because these disciples were needing Jesus. Because they were in such despair and uncertainty. Uncertainty. What was going to happen? Their hopes and their dreams was in this man named Jesus who did so many great things. Who they saw do miracles and raising Lazarus from the dead. And people rejoicing in him. This same man was crucified like a criminal. They couldn't understand. And that's how we feel many times in this world. We know that Jesus has done this. This has been given to us by the church and by the, our forefathers and our mothers. That Jesus is King. That He has resurrected. We have new life in Him. But when we look in this world, when we watch TV, when we go to our homes, we really don't feel it. We feel like the disciples. We see the tragedies happening so much around this world. You know, recently, you know, recently the bombings in Boston, the shooting in the school in, uh, Connecticut, uh, in Connecticut. Uh, all the tragedies, you remember the, the tsunamis or, you know, different uh, terrorism and all these different things. In our houses we have uh, difficulties uh, with uh, divorce now in our churches and even in our community. Children having issues with parents and at school. All these things seem to add up and add up. And we begin to feel like these two disciples. We don't know where we're going. We're just now on a journey back to where we want to, where we came from. That's not how these disciples are. They went back to Emmaus. They were following Jesus for those however many, those three years of his ministry. They're seeing all these great things. They're on a great journey. Like they're going to the kingdom. But once they saw tragedy happening, they went back to the old ways. They went back to Emmaus. Not just that it was a bad thing, that's where they are from, and that's where they had a house to be comfortable. But they forgot the blessing and the grace and the great power that was coming from Jesus Christ Himself. The great strength that is found in the Scriptures, and the great blessing that we receive by His body and blood. That truly by receiving the body and blood of Jesus Christ, we have new life and our eyes and our lives will be open to the great understanding that God has risen from the dead and has conquered death for us. And that no matter what tragedies or difficulties that come in our way, if we have Jesus Christ in our hearts, we're able to have our eyes open to rejoice like these apostles. Because as you see near the end of the passage, the whole time they're, they're walking with Jesus and He explains to them, and only until when he stopped and resided with them, and he broke the bread, he recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And then he vanished. And then they said to themselves, wow, they recognized Jesus then at that moment. And then they thought to themselves, when Jesus was walking with them, when they didn't recognize him, so our hearts were burning. So our hearts were burning and yearning, and understanding that something great was being given to them, but they were still kind of lacking something. And that lacking was seeing the trueness of Christ in His body and blood. Because without the cross, without Jesus dying for our sins, and giving us His body and blood, we have no life. And without receiving that body and blood, we have no life. We will never be able to come to understand who Christ is. That's why it's so important and integral for us as Christians that we participate in the Quran, but also to read the Scriptures. That's what the great message, that's one of the great messages we read from, understand from this passage. Without understanding the scriptures and partaking of the Qurbana, we have no understanding of who God is and what God is doing in our life. That's the first great message that we have to understand. We have to read the scriptures and we have to partake of the body and blood of Christ. And we have to do that earnestly, daily in our lives. Because if we don't, We'll be going towards a journey to a maze that's leading away from Christ. We'll be going away from the, the holy hill of Calvary and going and descending to the place of death. That's not where we want to go. And that's where we're going every time that we forget about Christ and we don't read our scriptures. That's when we start feeling the effects of sin and all these tragedies happening in our life. 
Instead of turning to Christ and to God and the Scriptures and in the Church, if we stay thinking, oh, all these bad things are happening, all these bad things are happening, and we just keep staying in that world of thinking, there's so many great, there's so many bad things that are happening in this life. Where is Christ? If we stay in that depression or stay into that low state, we are going to die in our sin because we'll forget who Christ is. And that's what we're being reminded of on this Sunday. That we cannot fall into that despair thinking that death is coming at us and we have nothing or we have no way to conquer it. But we have Jesus Christ who has conquered death and Satan through His glorious resurrection. Because like I said, you know, this actually happened on Easter Sunday. But we know that this, we're reading this only now three Sundays or three, four Sundays after Easter. Because now we know that we are so happy on Easter Sunday. You know, we get to eat meat again. It's a big joyous time now. There's no more comforting and no more sadness, no more black in the church. We're rejoicing in Christ and we're rejoicing in God. But then we start getting back to our old routines. <coughs> Back, you know, we were so great. Holy Week was such a great experience, and all the Fesaha and Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter were all great spiritual children of God. We could say, Yes, I'm a Christian. But then now, come a, few, uh, a week after, two weeks after, three weeks after, many times we just fall back into that same old routine. We didn't learn something, but we weren't able to change fully from what we learned during Lent and during Holy Week. And this Sunday, placed specifically now, before we were to uh, celebrate Ascension and Pentecost to remind us we have a great strength in Christ our God because He gives us His strength He gives us His body and His blood so that our lives can be truly transformed so that we can go back like these two disciples because they didn't when they were in Emmaus and they saw Jesus they didn't stay in this old grave where now we're in, we have Jesus we know He's risen they ran back it's at that very moment they ran back to Jerusalem back to the church and rejoiced with the Christians, and then proclaimed the gospel of Christ in their lives. But these two great saints became bishops and evangelists. They were uh, part of the 70 who were sent out and proclaiming the gospel of Christ. That same mission is given to us. But we have to remember the joy and the grace that has been given to us by Christ's holy and glorious resurrection. Because if we forget it, we're going to that path that leads away from Christ, away from His holiness. Because even if you look geographically, when we learn, study the scriptures, they say the road to Emmaus is actually going towards Jericho. If you look where Jericho, if you've ever gone to the Holy Land, Jericho is going close to the Dead Sea, where you're below sea level. And they said nothing really, really grows in that place. It's almost as if you can feel the presence of that you're going down and down and down in the earth, to a place where nothing is living anymore. If you go to the Dead Sea, there's no real plants. Very few, because it's so uh, below sea level, so much salt and sulfur on that area, nothing can live. That things are just dead, uh, dead and dying. And that's the road that the church father telling us, that's the road they are going towards. When they fell into that despair. But because of Christ, and that's one other thing that we have to remember. When they were going on that road, they were still thinking about Jesus. But they couldn't understand and the greatest thing that we can remember is Jesus went to them. Jesus walked with them. He continued to walk with them in that path, going to death and destruction. But He did not want them to stay there. But He explained to them and showed to them the great blessing that they had been receiving that whole time that they were with Jesus before He died and resurrected. And slowly that was changing their hearts and their minds. And when they came to the Holy Kurban out, that moment, they knew they were, then they changed, they, they went for the better, and they changed for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the glory of God. That experience is what we're supposed to experience, and that's the challenge we're called to have every time that we come to church. Because we know that we, during the week, we can be falling into so many different things going on in the world. But when we come to the church, we have to remember all things that Christ has done for us. And that when we come to the Holy Qurban and receive His body and blood, God should give us a joy that the resurrected body of Jesus Christ has conquered all things. That I don't have to you know, worry about all these things if I have Jesus Christ who strengthens us. May His blessings that He had given to those disciples of Emmaus continue with us every time that we partake in the Holy Kurbana so that we can glorify God all the days of our lives, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen.